Well, hello and welcome back um, to another product review. We're going to be looking at the Mobius uh, USS Franklin. This will be my uh, first Mobius build, and the kit looks great. Looks amazing. Really happy with the uh, instructions. Are really good. We'll go through all that stuff. Um, I got some uh, photo etch from Green Strawberries for this kit. Um, I don't think I got much of anything else. It's pretty a straightforward kit, and I didn't get any. There is some like window masking and stuff. I think Aztec Dummy has, but I don't know. I don't think I went. Through that. I think you know. I might have. I'll have to look. It's been the order all the accessories that I want for them right away. So, but definitely a cool ship. Underrated one in the movies. It's from Star Trek Beyond, but it's kind of cool because it's pre NX One. Because this one's not warp five capable. It's a warp four and, and lower ship. But it was supposedly around and flying around at the time that the Danx One was out. So, and I think they incorporated with the in the actual series Enterprise. Um, so, and then the movie Beyond, they connected it of you know that ship being of the era when the NX One came out. So that's kind of cool. It's a pre NX One ship. It's got a really aggressive look to it so I like it and uh, looking forward to getting to it um, what else did I do you know lighting kit I got for it so we'll have the spinning bassards and and all that but it's you know it's a nice kit like I said the first Mobius kit I'll be building and looking forward to it um, I want to get more stuff from them maybe the space 1999 stuff it's going crazy right now so but anyway Let's uh, hop over to the bench and take a look. Okay, here we go. Here it is, the uh, Mobius uh, USS Franklin from Star Trek Beyond. This is my first Mobius kit. I know um, there's some other stuff from them I'm, I want to get. Um, judging by a quick look at this, I'm really impressed with their box. Great box art. A really classy looking box. And then they got the nice stuff going on in the back here the stand for this kit is really nice um, I like this ship I'm gonna do it more in a this is kind of like a gray I'm gonna do it in my the silver that I did uh, the NX one in to kind of tie them together because this is a predecessor to the NX one this is the NX 326 um, she was a level a warp four and down where the nx1 is the first warp five ship um it's a cool and aggressive looking ship it almost reminds me of like a snake ready to attack or something like that i don't know um it's gonna be cool she's gonna have the yellow bassard collectors that'll spin i'm not gonna have the blade spin because i think i do have it, they have their own blades, but I'm trying to think, do I have any... The photo watch I have for this is going to be like a lot of detail for this, um, which I do have to get out. And I do have some uh, stuff from uh, Aztec coming in, I think more to, just for the striping and the window blocking. But let's open her up. They have a wonderful, wonderful instruction book, kind of like Ravel's, kind of that kind of design. Really nice page turning, you know. And there's all the blades that go in the nacelle, and then so it's going to be a nice build. And here's a nice color of you know for the painting and like I said this you know for the base which is great that's the base there um, there's not a lot of different colors to it they're saying is a weathered steel the main hall and then you got these you know transparent red uh, for the impulse engines but what's this they're calling a, a dusty red for the striping that goes along here 
on these edges and a couple of these. And I don't know if these are probably decals. So we'll just go off the decals to match it. She's a pretty nice size ship. I don't what scale is she? What are they considering it? I'm not sure. But it's a nice size. I like it. All that detail that's up in there. And there's our lower half with the pylons that hold them themselves. There's the upper parts of the pylons. There's your stand. So we'll have to see how this works if I'm going to actually use that. What's that part? That's a ball end too, isn't it? Kind of. Yeah, not sure what all that's going on there. I'm going to show them with the stand and the instructions here. Oh, the, the one piece goes into the other piece. So that goes into that piece. Okay, and it covers, and that's just structural. So I could notch a wire up through. That side doesn't have the nub, and this one has like, the whole ball. Because that just goes through there. Yeah, so I could notch a wire through there. So that might be the way I'm going to do it. Um, here we got our nacelles. And all its coverings and pieces that go around it. And there's our base. Yeah, because that's a really nice base. Once that's all painted up the way it's supposed to be, the blue and the golds and stuff. I can put a jack here somewhere. Yeah, that would fit perfectly. Yep. Put a jack there and then sneak that wire up through there. So it's really nice. Um, they give you, in your decals, they give you two different sets. They give you a worn set and a, you know, brand new set. With the worn, look, they look a little more dirtier. So that's pretty cool. It's a cool little feature. There's our clear parts. Let's say that's like a torpedo launcher area and just another sprue of, of the uh, edges, windows. And then there's clear parts for the windows. But yeah, that's going to be a fun build. I'm really happy. And I like how the parts lay in there nicely too. And then you got your bigger ones that you just... Boom, boom but that's it the detail on it it's great I've seen some build videos on the build it fits together pretty nice like I said I'm probably gonna do it the uh, the, the gray silver that I used for the uh, NX1 to tie that in but this will be dustier and dirtier so it'll have that more dull look because she was supposed to be found buried in a mountain Okay, that's the main hull. I forgot to prep. Really like the box. I forgot to prep. Uh, the um, add-ons. So. Yeah, to wait as I take my time, <laughs> take the time to go in here. And really, this is it here. As far as photo edge, um, I've been getting more organized. I got a tub of just photo edge stuff, which makes it, you know, and stuff that came with the photo edge or extra parts I've been using. Like these are extra parts from a ship, and eventually I know. These buttons got to go on the Romulan ship. I'm building one of those metal arts uh, stuff. I got a bunch of them, but I started with the speeder bike, so 
I keep the, its parts because it's they're a little more complex than you think, or time consuming, I should say, because it's like bending photo etch all day. So I've been keeping those in here too. But this is the uh, photo etch kit that I got from Green Strawberries for the Franklin, and it comes with the resin parts for the bridge because this is kind of one of those bridges where they have an actual window instead of like a, dis a view screen so let's open it up and take a look here here's your rising bridge here's the railings and, and seats that go all around inside here that's going to look great and then here's your actual photo etch parts for the bridge that gives it height and the railings and all that and there should be another let's open it these things are always so hard to get back in so <laughs> but that's what that is and there should be yet another one because there's some some type of depth to all this photo etch and here they show you putting them all together is that the ceiling part is that what that is that's what that is and I think this is the base or you build your base off of the base yeah, this is the whole front half of the ship I think you replaced. I think. And this is the whole base. All this equals these layers here. And then you put your bridge there. That's what's going on. Yeah, and then you have, I guess, this stuff goes up into the ceiling. And that gives you a light so you can light down. Okay. And it looks like so you can also make a skate pod out of the hatch out of the is it the top of the ship? Yeah. You can drill a hole and then have a ladder and a and I guess to show because that's probably how they got I haven't watched the movie yet. I do have it on Blu-ray. But uh oh and here's a little stencil that you don't want to lose either. Or that's your window you cut out. You can't even see down there, but there's a clear part you don't want to lose. Um, yeah, there they show you putting it in there for the window, for the cockpit. Part 12, is that on this one? Yeah, right there. And you got these photo etch sensors to give you a detail there. And there's supposed to be a bunch of these little tens. Got little dots that go all over the place. And these, I'm not sure what they were. But they're on this ship, and I guess we'll do them. You got grills for your impulse. That's nice. But yeah, you can have all those things to give detail and the hatch. And I'm going to have to watch the movie too to see what all these things that are on the upper deck, all those things are. I don't even know. They don't tell you on this either. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do the hatch leading down into the uh, and I guess these areas are so you can light areas up too 
Because they didn't have anything go on the insides of those. That's just the parts that come down. I guess they're screens. I guess I can hit them with window maker. Supposed to be view screens. Oh. And then you have that ceiling grid. So do we have to cut? Yeah, we have to cut that out. Well, that's going to be cool though. Uh, very nice. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to have the hatch with the thing open. That would kind of look cool, but I want her to look like she's flying, and it wouldn't look good with it flying with a hatch open. So I think, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I mean, it would, get, it would bring cool detail to it. It definitely would. But like I said, I went flying. Yeah, and then about these little pieces that are all over. I'll have to see what how that happens in a movie. If they're small enough, which they do look really small, we'll go with them. So, But yeah, that's the photo etch kit. You know, this is your walls and your ceiling. And you cut that little area out, which is going to be hard for you to see. You cut this little area out. And you put that ceiling grid in the so you can light from the top so that's going to be cool like I said this is the hatch so you could have like a ring that goes over and a ladder and a lid that pops open so it looks like they that's how they got in the ship when they found it on the ground and that's the floor so very cool like I said make sure you do not lose this little piece because that's your clear parts for your your view screen it looks like it gives you two so that's great let's keep that in there and then this kind of went like that and are we going to be able to get this to slide back in this baggie yeah, that's that's to be seen they they get these baggies just to fit and usually what it is is the sticky part always catches i mean there's your resin pieces so that's a good kit to get if you order the Mobius for USS Franklin. I recommend that. I don't think it was badly priced. I mean, I don't think it was, you know, Green Strawberries got, always has good price on their decals and uh, or their uh, photo etch. So. And I do have one more thing, I think, to show. Here it is. Here we go from Aztec Dummy. I think these are just the, because I ordered this quite a while ago, but I think these are just the uh, window uh, window masking. And I'm sure there's some other cool things that he sent along for it. Yeah, stripings of the engines. You got your window mask, you got your mask even for the, for the view screen. You got them all for those areas. You got some masking for um, miscellaneous clear parts and for all your striping. I get oh, so this is a 350. So it should be the scale to the Enterprise NX1. Then he gives you the masking, so you can always spray the that dusty red first. Then you put the masking over, and then you can do the rest of your hall color. You kind of do it in reverse, which kind of makes sense. Um, he even gives you the stripings for the nacelle in case you don't want to use the decals, which I did not open the uh, 
Well, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't have that. It's just mainly just, um, I don't have any of that striping. But that's awesome. Let's look at the vinyl. You're not going to be able to see the cuts. It's just one sheet. Very simple. There's all your window stuff that you're not going to be able to see. You know, there's more of them up here. Are they duplicates? Yes. So I see that shape and I see those shapes. And then he gives you a bunch of those squares, a bunch of those ovals and circles. And what's He went long ways this way, he did more that way. And there's all your stripings for your engines and then your pylons. So that's awesome. And it was only like 15 bucks, I think. So, good deal. <clears throat> Anything to make, you know, it's 10, 15 bucks makes things a little quicker. You know, everything, it's going to cut. Okay, I need to, uh, I'm going to need to mask this window. I know I can just pluck it off. I need to mask all this stuff. I don't have to sit there and, it's the time that it's going to save me. It's great. And, Yeah. And some of these you can actually, I found you can actually save if you just put right back on this sheet. Once you weed it off, you can almost get them back on this sheet because they have enough stick in case you want to do another one. You know, you can get you know, one or two applications out of it. It all depends on how much paint gets on them too. But Is there something else in here? No. But I've had pretty much good luck with would uh, lose stuff so I like to use it when I can even if it's simple as window masking which I did get for even the TOS Enterprise which is really all no real aztec -ing. although you can get aztec -ing. I think Lou makes one for the Constitution original and I'd almost like to build another one at a uh, build one the original series enterprises with that as teching but not real contrasty just almost like a transparency i don't know what you do she's a grayish green maybe you do like a, a silver or a green color shift a silver color shift would look good with the gray so when you just get it right you see like a silver and maybe a few green ones here and there yeah it would look cool but okay, that's it. Um, that's all the accessories I have for her. So I hope you uh, come and watch the series. And uh, till then, thanks for watching. All right, I almost forgot one thing for the U.S. Franklin. I do have a lighting kit from Gary Hughes. I ordered uh, the smaller TOS. I think it's the one one thousands, or maybe it's the one uh, one five three seven. But, uh, so I just ordered that because that'll give me the spinning lights and for the Bassards. Um, here's the kit. Like I said, it's the TOS one. So here's the, uh, some of the boards in here. You can see, and then here's all your different lights for the, uh, spinning Bassards. Um... You got a template of how they're supposed to be, and this is the flashing. Why don't you give me a, a, a basic flashing uh, for the uh, TOS, or for the uh, Franklin. Which I'm, I'm assuming is just going to be, let me see what's in this one. We got... I'm assuming these are most of the lights for the Enterprise. Then we have a green and a red, which I'm assuming are going to be our nav lights. But since this is for the smaller version, it's not, you know, going to be elaborate. It gives you a jack, it gives you the multicolor cables for, and that's the chip for the uh, rotating facades. And there's the momentary switch, which I will probably put down in the base, like I did on the NX-1. That way I can change how they rotate. Um, but I believe the way it goes together is most of these are in the uh, 
the spinners, but I thought there would be some different colors in there too, because I know that. But if it's all yellow, that's perfect, because that's what this is supposed to be. But you know, uh, the, I thought that was supposed to be more of a red. So, but if it's all yellow, that's perfect. And hopefully those yellows glow yellow. <laughs> But yeah, and here's, you know, for the windows. Yeah, it has a white dot on it. He puts a little white dot on the baggie. to show you what the colors are. So that's all the window lights there. And these are all the white lights that go throughout the ship. And <clears throat> like I said, this is going to be used for the frying gun. So that's going to be for the saucer. Um, you know, I'll have some lights for the impulse. I'm not sure what this other red light would be for. I'm assuming since there's a red and a green that you'd have for the nav lights and they probably had them so they sat close <clears throat> the red other red maybe for the impulse since it's on a small ship you could put one light back there I'm gonna need two if I just run a regular red but I might see if I can get flickering ones back there then these should work great um, Where's those the, uh, templates? They're saying one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight, so there should be 16 of these. And that's uh, what I'm gonna assume. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's 16 of the yellows. So that'll work great for the Franklin because that's what I need is yellow but I'm a little confused for a TOS because it's usually a red basard so hmm interesting but there's our shrink tube as well our battery jack for testing and uh, yeah so that's gonna be the Franklin's lights uh, like I said they're from Gary Hughes I'm using the TOS kit because it has the similar, you know, things as far as rotating sards and basic saucer lighting and, and some strobes. And I'm not going to do any, I don't think I'm going to do actually any flickering strobes. I'm not sure. I do have, I could use a kit to do that. I could use one of mine that gives you double. But then your nabs and your strobes will be at the same speed. Hmm. I'm thinking more with the Franklin. It's going to be more of a... Uh, she's going to be more of a strobe or a navigation or maybe I'll just do strobes I don't know let me look at the I mean you got spots there but I think those are sensors these are your lights and does it give you a two on the bottom no so they'll work for the red and green on the top so that's what we'll do Let's see what they're saying. And that's the thing, is doing the research on what they are. Marker light that goes up in there. Marker light port. put on the top of the the hull you know like 
Oh, these are the, that's what those corner lights are, but they'll be constant on. I think they're supposed to look like the same piece. So then we can do the red and the greens there. These are actual just parts. They're not, I mean, I don't know if they're supposed to be lights. Are they a clear part? <clears throat> Upper rear bridge marker lights. That's those, but those are going to be, uh, wait, yeah, let's see, that's not actually wouldn't be too bad because if the hatch is only as big as that, I might do the photo etch little piece. And then there's those little pieces that go all over the ship. But yeah, that'll work. So we do have the marker lights, but we have nothing on the bottom, so we don't need them for the bottom. But you don't have any real strobes on this ship that I'm seeing. You know, nothing on the nacelles. Nothing on the top side. Nothing on the bottom side. So there are forward sensors, those there. I'll have to see what, yeah, see that gets a green and a red. So that's about it. Now these up here, I could put a flasher up there to flash those two clear parts. But now I gotta watch out whatever's going back here. Probably a clear window. It's a window. So of course. It's gonna be a window right there. I have to see how far I can get those clear parts or if I could stick a fiber optic up through and run that to a flashing tube. Maybe that's what I'll do. But I could always have these flash. And that's probably what I'll do. These I'll just leave alone. They're sensors with a clear lens on them. I think there's a photo etch piece for those now. These are just going to be white. And then we'll do the green and red. And that's it, you know. It would be nice to put something on the nacelle. So there's something back there. I don't know where you would put it. would have to put it like I would think on the forward parts of the nacelle like here normally it would be at the tips like the refit but that's a flange so I think we'll keep it simple we'll keep it we'll have a flasher up there there's nothing nowhere in the bottom to put anything even if we make one up Is this that weird stand at Cradles? I thought this one cradled, or is this a newer version of it? No, yeah, see that goes in there and then it cradles it. Yeah, that's what that's all about. But yeah, I don't see anywhere to put one down here unless you put them on these ends here or something. There's usually would be one somewhere here, but all these raised pieces would hide anything. You'd have to put it here. So we'll keep it simple. Nothing. We'll just do a. We'll make these two bridge. Can you see it in this picture? Yeah, it'd be right here. We'll just make those two flash. And then the other ones will run in a slower pulse. It'll be perfect. Yeah, and I think I can do a, a single flasher back there without affecting that window. I'll have to run my own fiber optics instead of a, a instead of a window piece. Yeah, I gotta have something that's 
and all clear that's close to that. Especially when I mushroom it over and then pull it through. Yep, that'll work. That's what we'll do. But there she is. I almost forgot the, the lighting kit. So, once again, it's going to be a fun build until we get to it. I hope you come back to watch the series. Um, it's a great kit by Mobius. So, until then, thanks for watching.